Today's video of IELTS Geek Lab is sponsored by PCBWay. Visit PCBWay.com to get started with your own PCB project from just $5. PCBWay deliver worldwide, provide instant quotes and offer a world-class service. Not only that, they now offer CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, 3D printing, injection moulding and PCB assembly services. If you have a hardware project, you really can't go wrong by using PCB Way to bring your project to life. Check them out today at PCBWay.com. Here we are with the BBC Micro. I also have a soldering ironing around here. And it's getting hot. Um, so danger, me and hot things, really not a good idea. Um, but I have little problem earlier on. This BBC was working away, then I started to smell a funny smell, and then a little bit of smoke came out and things went pop. So, uh, you can guess what happened next. It was the poor old power supply that went fat. So, <clears throat> I'm going to have a look at the power supply and see what I can do with it. My bet is that the reefer caps have gone. The reefer caps, um, I'm no um, electrical wizard at all by the way, um, so if I can do this anybody can, but basically the reefer caps are um, capacitors that are used to reduce radio frequency noise emissions and were used an awful lot in the early 80s and uh, maybe even the 90s um, because uh, of stricter government regulations. So here is a new one, this is a sort of plastic uh, made one as opposed to the paper film ones that were commonplace in the 1980s. Now um, I've unscrewed everything but basically on the underneath of the BBC there are two screws that say fix and that allows you to take the case off and uh, Thanks for coming into the view, Kat. That, that's really helpful. Cool. Okay, you can go now. Say goodbye. Yeah, cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> why is it the cat always gets in the videos? Whenever I'm making the videos. Okay, and then there's another couple of screws which you can take from the underside as well, which have um, very small uh, little washers on them. So yeah, don't lose them or else uh, you'll be you'll be upset. They look a bit like that. There, those ones there. So I'll put the washer back on. Um, all right. So then you can flip your keyboard if you need to. But I'm going to be servicing the power supply. Um, so just be careful when you lift up the power supply. So the power supply, by the way, oh yeah, also talking about screws, is attached via screws on the underside of the machine. Is there? There's one, two, three screws on the underside of the unit. Just try and bring that into frame. One, two, three screws there. Okay. Uh, I'm already smelling the smell, which was the burning smell from earlier on. Um, now, before you lift this out, you'll find that on the motherboard itself, there are three places where it's plugged in. And you'll see that, that there are headers where you'll see them plugged in. So all you have to do is lift them off. I recommend just taking a photo obviously of the board before it goes on and then there's one tiny little one which is negative 5 volts down in the corner as well and that's kind of underneath the keyboard so just be aware of that one okay so once you've got this cable all the way out then you're free to take this up so just be careful to touch it by the sides especially if you've had it on recently because it might still retain some high voltages as it says there danger High voltage. Okay. Okay, so inside here, and again, I'll just see if I can point this out. Um, it's quite difficult to see, but I will show some close-up photos. But um, just just for the sake of it, I will see if I can get that on this video. So you see that um, yellow thing there? So there's this surface mount here, but below that there you can see 0.1 microfarads electrolytic capacitor which is uh, in a state of disrepair, it looks pretty sad, it's all burst open on its side and that is the reefer capacitor. There's actually also another little one 
down on the side here. So I don't know how many microfarads that one is, but that's the capacitor. So let me just have a look and see if I can see anything written on it. It does show you, it does tell you, but it, it's hidden by these cables here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can get into this here. You, they're all riveted on the bottom side, so obviously I have to unscrew using these screws here and just be careful about doing so. So I'll do that right now and I'll see how I go. These have all been painted with, um, I'm assuming, like tamper evident paint. So I'm avoiding the warranty now. <laughs> what, 40 years later? Well, it's uh, attached, obviously, by cables going in here, so I'll need to pull that out, and obviously these cable ties need to be cut as well, and this guy needs to go in. So there's a few more things to do before it slides out. Okay, so I managed to get the switch out the back which took an inordinately large amount of time and in the end I, I just used a bit of brute force and ignorance with the screwdriver I actually ended up chopping the bottom leg off here so I could weasel it out so not really, not really the best way, there is more elegant ways of doing it uh, it'll still go back in just fine but just bear in mind that um, this does have to come out and it is pretty, pretty tricky um, and also you have to take off all four of the connectors. Now you could probably take them out before you take the switch out. Uh, sorry, you could probably take them out when it's through here, so you've got better access at the connectors. But the only problem with that is it makes it very difficult to get under here when you're trying to lever the switch out. So I took them off before I took the switch out. Only problem is that way you've got less room to take these off and they are stuck on really, really hard. So they've got these, um, sorry, I'm, I'm showing you the wrong thing, these things here that plug onto the switch, right? And these, these things are on really, really hard. And whilst I was pulling one off, it came apart in my hand which is not great. So I'm going to have to um, solder this thing back together. So that's not great, but, but I'll manage. Um, I'll get that. I'll get back to that later. So anyway, I've got that. I've got that off. Uh, now I just need to take this guy off here as well. And I guess that's just a case of well, it is just a case of pushing these in, but again, it's going to be a bit, a little bit tight. So I'm going to have to get uh, get the use of this guy here, and um, I push and pull and shimmy until it manages to come out. So wish me luck with that. So that was actually a lot easier than the rocker switch. So yay! It was just a little screwdriver to the underside and a screwdriver to the, up, the top side and then pull it out <clears throat> and then it came. So that wasn't too bad. This guy on the other hand, completely different story. And now I think I need to just get this guy off. So let's get these. Put that in my little baggie of screws. 
don't want to forget any of those. Okay, so that's the earth cables now out and detached fully from the case. Good old UK plugs. Always have earth cables. Another arbitrary screw down here, which I negate to look at for some reason. I'm not quite sure why. But, uh, Awesome socks, one power supply. Done. So that's going to go away. Let's have a look at it. Alright. So now I can get a much better view of that horrible cap. This one down here actually looks not too bad. But we'll see how we go. Copyright. 1981 Aztec components. Whether this is actually a 1981 board or not, I'm not quite sure. Now the other caps on here, um, there's a little bit of shrinkage on this cap right here, so that the, um, the covering around the top of it is, is shrunk back a little bit, which could indicate that that one's not got super long left to live. But all of the rest of them look really in really good condition for saying this has been operating from at least 1983, maybe longer. So yeah, not bad. Um, let's get to work on this guy and this guy. So here's my modern replacements and you can see they're completely plastic. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get a sharpie and mark the bottom of this board so I know exactly where I'm supposed to be getting my solder points. Okay, so I've marked out on the board, there, 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 there. Okay, let's have a look and see. That one came out pretty easy. Let's see about the other side. Nice and easy. And it's absolutely mashed. Inky. There we go. I won't be needing that again. Came out pretty easily as well. Very cool. All right. And that one there, I think, has cracked on the top. I don't think you can see that on this, but um, it's cracked, but it's not dead yet. So it was only a matter of time before it was, it was going to blow up as well. So definitely, definitely good to replace both reefer caps at the same time. Now, if you are replacing the big, big guys, any of the proper caps, um, if you're replacing these, do remember that they have polarity on them. So these guys here, if it's got a sticker down the side, that side there means positive. Um, so if you look at the board, you'll see which side is positive and which is negative. So um, 
just uh, just be aware of that. Okay, right, time to get this guy in here and this guy in there. The small one in there and the big one in there. Simple, right? What could possibly go wrong? Difference in size. Now, unfortunately, the legs for this cap were not long enough. Um, there was a, it's a smaller size, it's a 20 millimeter, I think. Um, the right capacity, but the wrong size. So I've um, done a very cheeky thing, and uh, I got one of these uh, that I'd had kicking around and pulled the legs off it and um, soldered them on so it's a, an absolute bodge job. I don't know if you can see just how bad my soldering is on there, but hey, that's, that's just the way it is. Um, so let's just put these through here and hopefully these legs stay on <laughs> and hope that everything is, is good in the hood. Solder these on. Um, yeah, uh, not not my not my finest hour here at all. I'm afraid to say, but, um, but uh, sometimes these bodge jobs just have to be done. We're not uh, we're not all Adrian's digital basement. He's he's really good. Well, my friend Jacob at Monotech, he can solder in seconds, and he's just amazing, amazing. last joint here. So with that out of the way, it was pretty much time to get things back up and running. However, I did need to make some final checks. I thought, well, I need to make sure that there's plus five volts coming out of these connectors before I plug them back into the BBC. And also I need to make sure that that connector that plugs into the switch is all sorted out. So I have to resolder that. After a bit of resoldering of that, I then went on to check all of the rails and all of them came out at 5.17 and 5.18. Okay, so the moment of truth. I've got everything plugged back in, screwed in and ready to go. Let's flick it on at the mains and see what happens. Well, that sounds pretty good to me. Convincing, even. Well, that's it. I was quite pleased with myself after that one. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Al's Geek Lab. I hope you'll join me for my next video. Until then, please press that thumbs up button if you liked the video. And of course, press subscribe as well to see all the latest content. If you like the video so much, then head over to Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Al's Geek Lab. And you can support me through there as well as now pressing the join button here on YouTube itself. Until next time, be excellent to each other. Whatever.